Hi there, welcome back. So you have an old PC computer, it has an i7 CPU with 16 or 32 gig of RAM. If you watch this video, we will show you how to turn this into a Proxmox home lab. Alternatively, you are dissatisfied with your commercial virtual machine hypervisor. I'm talking about that VMware dot 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 and you want to use the best open source hypervisor, Proxmox, then this video is also for you. This is our Proxmox server, and we are now going to show you how to install it on your own machine. You have either created a DVD from the ISO file, or you used a thumb drive and created a bootable USB drive. And when you boot, you get to this screen here. So we are going to choose the graphical installation. You can see here, you have a choice of using the terminal or the graphics. We prefer to use the graphic interface. So go there. I'm just moving it to the top and press enter. And now you will need to accept the EULA. So we click on the I agree button here. We are happy with the settings that it's found. And then you click next. You need to select the country and the time zone. We will leave this as UTC. And for a country, we are going to go with London, England. So that's United Kingdom. But we want to keep our American keyboard. Next. Now we need to create the password and confirm it. User at Yahoo. That's fine. In your case, you will use your real email address so that you can receive notifications. It's picked up the machine and it's given me an IP address. I'm going to change this. And make it 33. For the DNS, we want to use 8.8.8. That's Google. Or you can use 1.1.1. And now that we've done that, we can confirm the settings. We are happy with what we have. Our keyboard is American. That's correct. Email address is valid. And now we can install. This will take a while, so we are going to pause the video. We are nearly there. Our installation is successful, and now we reboot. And we can log in as root with the password we just created. And we are in. And now we will open this in the browser. They give us the URL over here. Make sure that it's HTTPS exactly as it is here. Press enter. It will be insecure because we haven't set up a certificate for this new server, but that's good enough. Now we click advanced and we proceed. 
you need to log in as root and the password we created. And don't worry about this error message. And we are now in. And if you look here now, you can see you basically have one drive. If we now go to our Proxmox server, you can see that we've done a fair amount of customizing on this server. We'll provide you with links to show you how to do that. As you can see here, this is a new installation with a single drive. Now, if you look at our Proxmox server, you can see that we have three drives here. This one is a two terabyte. This one is a one terabyte. And we have used a 250 gig SSD drive for the boot disk. In fact, that is a recommendation to give you good performance on the server. So this you would definitely use a SSD. These drives here, the one terabyte and two terabyte drives, you can use disk drives. If you do have SSDs, you will get better performance, but we've never had a problem with performance using those drives. Now that we installed Proxmox on a server, we would like to show you a few tips on how to drive it. The first thing you will want to do is to create a VM. So you will click on the Create VM button. You can do it here as well. Create VM. However, we got more space on this server, so we are going to use this server to do that. And then here we will choose the ID number. If you look on the side here, you'll see we have a whole range of IDs. So let's make this 160. And give it a name, Test VM. Next, you will select the ISO image for this. We are going to use Ubuntu 22.04, whatever. We'll use 24.04, that's fine. Next, leave that as default. Next. Now allocate enough storage to this. You can use 100 gig. We are going to use 50 gig. And we are using disk 2, which is a 2 terabyte disk. So we got a lot of space there. 50 gigs is enough. Well, that depends on what you're going to do with this. I have a server here where I've got 500 gigs. I'm using that for backup. Um, sockets, keep the socket as one, but always the cores make it two. Next, increase this from two gig to four gig or eight gig or 16 gig. Depends on your requirements. We don't change anything here. And we recommend you don't change things here if you don't know what you're doing. So leave this, it's fine. Now we got to the point where we can confirm the settings are correct. And yes, we are happy with that. So we will then say finish. And if you look here now, it's busy creating us a Ubuntu VM. And our VM is ready, we can use it. So if you go to console, let's expand the console a bit, and then say start now. We are going to install. You see, this is now an Ubuntu server installation. Right, English is fine. Enter.
Now here you have a choice. You can either update the installer, which I recommend you do. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that. And then once you have done that, then you can select done. And done. And this server is going to be set with a DHCP IP address. That's fine if you have a firewall and you can set IP addresses. Excuse the flashing of the drive, but that's because of my graphics card on my laptop. Okay, we are happy with this. You can press enter. We don't want to make a change there. And we can press done. And continue. We will leave this as is. We won't use encryption. However, if it's a production server, yes, you want that. Right, we are happy with our settings, so we hit done. And we confirm by going down and saying continue. At this point in time, you want to give the server a name. I normally call the server with the username as well. So that way I know what user to use. So my server name will be also NickM. And my user will be NickM as well. And that was my old IBM user when I worked at IBM. Right. Now for the password, do something strong and confirm. And done. And continue. And here we press the space bar because we want to select the SSH server. You must do this. And then done. And just go to the bottom and select done again. We will stop the video now until it's completed the installation. And eventually you get to this screen where it asks you to reboot now. So this is the installation completed for our VM. And now our VM is restarting. A recommendation that we have, don't open the VMs here in the console. Rather SSH and connect to them from a Ubuntu or a Windows PuTTY session. We are running Mint Linux on this machine. Right, now that you've seen how to create a VM, the next thing we want to create is one of the most important things, and that is a container. It's called the Alexi container. So you click here. This is very similar to the way we create a VM, but there are some subtle differences. So let's call this Ubuntu 2. Here we enter the password. This is the difference between installing Ubuntu as a VM and installing Ubuntu as an Alexi container. So let's uh, put in the password 
and confirm it. And if you have a SSH key for your Linux session or your PuTTY session, you can paste it in there. But we're not going to do that. Now here we need to install it from a template. We do have an Ubuntu server here, so we can select that. And then storage as well, select the drive. We are going to use the two terabyte drive. That's fine. And let's give this a hundred gigs. And next, memory, one core is fine. And the limits here, let's make this, we're going to make this four gig. You could make it eight gig. And the same with the swap, we'll also make it networking. Here you need to set it on static IP. We have selected the static IP address. There we've entered it and our gateway as well. We've kept the same bridge, that's fine. Now here you need to put slash 24. And you'll notice the minute I did that, this button became available. And now we can say next. And next. And I'm not going to keep the server, so I'm going to delete it. But in your case, you would say finish and it will create it. Well, there you have it. We now have a Proxmox server. We have installed a VM in there. We have installed an LXC container in there. And we have a special recipe for installing Docker. We recommend you install Docker in the LXC container. And we will provide you with a link down below for that installation. We trust you found this useful. Please give us a like. Please comment down below as we need the YouTube algorithm to promote this video so that we can reach our target. And with that, we greet you. Baie dankie tot ziens. Grazie mille a me. Ciao. Yesu sinaderfe. A vida zain mein Freund. Domo arigato tomadachi sayonara. And please give us a comment down below. Thank you.